For this video, we'll be making a paracord grip with four axis basket weave. Gives it that nice square look to it. We will be using black paracord, blue camo paracord, a pair of snips, a pair of pliers with a pull through, masking tape, and your typical spatula. The other thing we will also be using super glue. Alright, so for this tutorial, we're going to be putting a basket weave grip onto this. Uh, it's a United Composite 70HL. The first thing I typically do lay down a little bit of extra, kind of tape it down. So I'm trying to find out how much cord I'm actually going to need. The reason we have to do that is we have a 250 yard spool of this black. Um, I can't exactly turn this while it's on that black because it'll twist up on me. So I literally am just finding out how much material I need. So I have about six inches extra laid here. Put it under power and I'm literally just going to go down the blank to find out how much I actually need. You're not that worried about the grips as far as the gaps right now because like I said you're just trying to find out how much material you're actually going to need. Now if you have one of those smaller spools of paracord you don't have to worry about it as much. So if you have one of those smaller spools you can just set it in your wrapper here pull some out as you need it to find out how much you need um, but since we're using a larger spool I like to pull it all off first and then go from there so this is where it will stop because the real seat's going to actually butt up against it. But what I do is then come back, make sure I have enough extra. Because when I go to lay these strips in that are going to go in between these layers, it's actually going to take up more paracord. So I want to always make sure to have enough. Just cut it off. And then unwind it. Come back here, take all this tape off. From there, I usually set this under the bench. What I'll do is take and actually de-gut the end of this. So I'll pull some out, just enough that I can gut the insides to lay it flat. Apparently I need a new razor blade. I'm very scissors. take 
pull this black top piece back over top and you'll feel it where it stops you, I don't know that you can actually tell but it stops right there it leaves me that much extra to be able to lay underneath so then what I'll do is I'll usually take that piece that stops is right here I'll lay it up on the grip or on the butt wherever you're working at take that same piece of tape I had and I'm going to tape it fairly close to where I'm laying it down from that point I'm going to lay it so that that still stays straight and pull it tight while I'm holding it reach back around hold that side pull it tight and what I'm doing is getting it to where I can cross over and pack it up against that butt from that point it's held in place that cork tape underneath is actually going to hold it and I'll do two passes and then I'll come back and trim this off then I'll have my lovely assistant hold this piece and trim it off. Now what I like to do is melt that edge so that it doesn't fray later on. Then I'll take my lighter and just push it down flat. From there is when we actually start laying in the pieces. So what I'll usually do is take, roll this back onto the butt, tape it again, so it doesn't. So what I'll take is, I'll take and lay a piece down. So I'll do it one at a time to about where the butt's going to be, and then I'll have about six inches after where the butt, the grip's going to end. That way, when I'm pulling this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and I get down here. You've got your paracord going over it, you've still got enough to be able to grab and move it around. So then what I'll do is take, find your top and bottom. So if this is bottom, I'll take, lay that out. Grab your piece of tape. Now this tape will not end up staying here. I'll show you what we do with it here in just a minute. But you want to get this one fairly lined up. Then go to your next side. Lay another piece in. Then go to your next one. Get that piece laid in. Then go to your next one. Now on this one we're only doing four. A lot of people do more than that. But because this is such a small diameter blank, we want it to have that kind of square feeling when it's all said and done. So we only do four pieces. Now that'll hold it in place for me when I come back and do the other part. Now all those guts that I pulled out, I always save them. As you can tell, on our last rod we did, we pulled out a good chunk of the insides. Find the end of it. And what I'm going to do is actually take one or two strands In this case, I'll use two because this is actually where your strength is coming from on the paracord. I'll take, find the top again, and you're essentially doing a thread wrap.
you're locking this cord down. So what I'm going to do is go all the way back to the edge, if that cord will hold. Go all the way back here. I'm actually going to lock all these down. What you see me doing is pulling this back a little so that I can actually get the part covered I want to get covered. Lock it down. Then once I'm back to where I'm meeting them, I'm actually going to cross over. And I'm wrapping this fairly tight because this is going to be the start of where I'm putting it. Then what I'll do, take, make a loop, go back through it, wrap it around my hand a couple times and then actually cinch that down and I'll go back and a lot of people call this whipping and I'll whip the other end that I was just on that I started with that way it gets a nice little ramp going up to it then I'll take come back through Make sure it's a nice, clean edge. And then do it one more time. And try to put the knot right over top of the other knot. Now that's one thing you want to try to avoid right there is it wrapping up on top of that paracord piece you had because that will show underneath. Lock it down again. Snip it. And melt that down onto itself. I'll come back, burn all these little edges up. Melt them down. So then any chance of poking through. Unwind this. Now this may have gotten a little loose while you were doing it. So make sure to snug that back up and you're going to wrap until you're right up on this. Take your other tape off. Snip those pieces. sure to re-snug it. And then once I get to the top section, which is here, I'll untangle all this. And the very next one, I'm going to pull back. 
actually I have to go one more wrap because of the layer there so I'm back to top now pull that section back Pull your next section back. So now we have a complete turn where they are pulled back on the other side. Then I'll go back, push all these as much as I can. We typically like to take the guts out of all of them so that it lays a little nicer. But this one was requested to be a little larger diameter. And then what I'll do, so that's one complete revolution. Two complete revolutions. Three complete revolutions. And that makes four back to the top. So as you can tell, there's one, two, three, four. <clears throat> then our next step, take your next band again, pull it back under. Essentially, what you're doing is a weave, just like with thread. Lock that one down, go to your next one. Bring it under, lock it down. Now it doesn't have to be 100% straight, you can come back and fix that. But you want to get it fixed before you get to the other end. Once you get down there, it's pretty hard to move stuff. If you have octopus hands, it helps with everything. All those people with an extra finger, you're in luck. So that's one complete revolution, two complete revolutions. Now we're up to, I think it's three there. Yeah, three there. Now what I do before I get to the last revolution is I'll take and try to straighten this out. Kind of pull it tight, go to your next one. That way once you get down to the other end, you're not fighting tooth and nail to get this straight. And if you locked them down properly, you can pull till you get a blister and it's not coming out. And that makes four. So you have four on top, four underneath. You're going to repeat this pattern all the way down to the other end. Thanks to Movie Magic, we're going to get finished with this and you'll see the ending of it. I just wanted to give you all a little helpful hint that I seem to have found. Um, obviously when you're doing this your hands are going to get sore, you're going to get calluses, blisters, um, cramps in particular, so I stop every so often before it starts cramping. Um, when I stop, I'll actually hold this down and I'll do it from the beginning. Just do a little hitch knot, take it, pull it around, grab your line, kind of cinch it down, and it's going to hold the tension there for you. You're not going to lose all your tension you had back here. It might loosen up a little bit here. Now, if you go messing with it and touching it, it's going to come undone. So I'm going to hold this here and show you. It will come undone, just very simply. Just 
push on it, it's undone. But as long as you cinch it down, walk away, it's not going to move. Now, if your kid comes in, touches it, animal, whatever, it's going to come undone, so be wary of that. But this will hold it in place for you to go do something else for a minute. All right, so as you can see, we're at the end of the uh, basket weave grip. And as you can tell, the real seat is not installed because I like to butt things up against each other to seal everything up. Um, but what I've done is cut it before where it's actually going to end. So this is where it's going to end at the edge of this cork tape. I'm about a half inch back to where these are. Um, I've locked down my paracord so that it holds it in place. And what I'll end up doing is coming back, pulling these as far as I can to have the ends sticking out. your snips. And what I'm going to do is take and trim all those little innards. And for this I'm probably going to have to get my lovely assistant to step over here and hold them because once again I don't have octopus hands. Luckily, she trusts me. Hold up. That white sticking out. That way, when I go to wrap these, that end is laying very flat. And that's all I'm wanting is that end to lay flat because what I'm going to do is take some more of this, the inside guts that I'm cutting out of that from a longer piece, and actually wrap it around to lock that down. Now, if you're employing your assistant, don't cut them. They won't help you help you anymore. And if you don't have an assistant, it's a good idea to do this before you get to this point. Yes? Yes. But I have this lovely assistant, and I like to keep her employed. So now that those are going to lay down nice and pretty, we'll take our two strands. Now another method you can do, um, I'll go ahead and show you. Take a little bit of super glue. We prefer Gorilla. It's a gel. doesn't run all over the place. What you can do... Get your threads ready. Take and I'm on the bottom side as you can see this little B marked here. Put you a little dab there. Take these, place them in it, then take your paracord, stick it over top. Hold it for 15, 20, 30 seconds. That way it glues itself down. I like to put this paracord over it so it's not all over my fingers. Now 
that should be good enough. Come back, trim this. Hold your finger there. I like to start a little further than where I actually cut the guts out of it. And I, I'm really loose right now. But as soon as I cross over, it locks down. And I pull as tight as I can. If you try to do that beforehand, you risk pulling it out. You can uh, slip off of the paracord sometimes. I'm just making that nice and even and flat to give it that nice little ramp down to where we're going to end. Now we're down to the end of it. I've only got a little bit left. So what we'll do, back it off just a hair, pull this under. Give it a nice little tug down. And then you can take your super glue again. Just kind of coat that a little. You just don't want it to really move from where you're putting it. Let that dry a little. I'll usually come back with a spatula because I can scrape it off afterwards. Press it down, kind of work that glue into there. That way it's nice and dry and push down on it so it's not coming undone. Because whatever gets on your spatula, you can come you can let it dry and then come back and scrape it off with a razor blade. Trim those off, which still had a little super glue on them. Back to your lighter. You want to melt all these edges down. You don't want them getting a chance to poke through. Makes your cord wrap look bad. If you get a spot that's a little thick, just kind of melt them down. Mm, super glue burning, yum. Then you get a nice little even section there to ramp down to. Now unwrap this cord. With my seven year old masking tape. You want to hold the tension as you're coming back. And then lock it down. And this one got a little bit out of place. So I'm going to work it to get it back where it needs to go. As you notice, I'm getting down to the last little section here. What I'll do is take this, pull all the guts out. Trim them all off. Hold your cord. Then you still have your innards up until, let me get that section fixed. So I still have all the way down to here. So, so what that's going to do is once I wrap around, I may have to cut a little more. That's what we're about to find out. Perfect. So that's where it actually ends with the innards. About a quarter inch from the actual end of it. So then I'll wrap it, unwrap it, take one of my scrap pieces, and make a pull through. 
Now that pulled through, I don't want it to stick out a bunch. I want to have more sticking out the back so that I can grab it. Make sure we're on the bottom. Okay, so top is here. We're going towards the bottom. Wrap it tightly. Once again, my guts have stopped there. So this last little bit will be no guts in it. One more turn. Get that pull through open. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You have to pull this back through all that tight wrapped cord. What I will usually do is grab a pair of pliers, pull on it. But before I do that, I go back, make sure I've covered up all my little gaps and everything like that, and check to see how the real seat's going to match up to it. Just about perfect. drywall tape is separating on the edge so I'll take that off and you're gonna do it just like you would a regular thread wrap you like I said you may have to have pliers you may not get the real seat out of the way on this one, I'm going to have to have pliers. I prefer locking pliers. Get it nice and snug. What I will typically do is try to trim this so that when it comes back in here, it's not poking out. I'll turn it so you all can see. So there's one, two, three, four wraps there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it right about there. Hopefully none of it sticks out. If it does, I'll show you how to fix it. Just work it through. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's a pain. And as you can tell, it's starting to pull through here. You can see my little line there. But we will go back and fix everything once I get it pulled through. Yes, sometimes it makes a little noise. And your assistant looks at you like you're crazy. But, that wrap is not going anywhere. Go back, fix up any of your pieces. And then this will butt up right up against it like it's not even there. So, you've got this little piece sticking out. What I will typically do is find a very sharp razor, preferably brand new if you have them or if you sharpen them. Turn it where you can see it. Is it this way, this way. So what I'll usually do is take it and kind of just slice it right along the edge there. 
pieces come out. But you want it as close as possible without actually cutting your other cord. So then you've got a little bit there. Take a spatula. Kind of tuck it down in there. And it's gone. That wrap's never going to move. Once I have my reel seat ready, I'll find top again, which is there. And now my cord is barely tucked up underneath the reel seat. <coughs> the pull through is back here on the back side so that when you're actually holding the reel, it's not in your way. Now what we'll end up doing most likely is taking this same blue color and making a little trim piece here since it is a little longer. Um, that way all you'll see is that with blue where my finger is and the same thing don't forget to follow us along on Facebook Instagram um, and YouTube this video will be posted there and wanted to thank Scott Allen for the tip on the cork tape he is remarkable for telling us that uh, it made a world of difference as far as how it actually works without the cork tape under there it actually will slip and turn and slide and I cannot move this cord no matter what I try to do, it is not moving. Um, so just wanted to thank you for that. And remember, try different things. Don't copy anybody.